بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear my students Today we are going to discuss one of the very important uh, chapter in finance Actually this is the core concept in finance and all of financial applications we based on this concept. Uh, today we are going to discuss the concept of time value of money. What is the meaning of time value of money? Uh, this uh, concept simply argues that a dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received uh, tomorrow. You, but if someone is giving you a choice, which one would you prefer to have uh, one dollar today or having one dollar tomorrow? Of course, one dollar today is worth more than one dollar received uh, tomorrow. Uh, this implies uh, that in investment uh, decision, we are dealing with long-term decision, which means that time is the main uh, factor in such a type of decision. And you, as a financial uh, manager, you must consider this impact of time on the value of your money, otherwise uh, your decision will be incorrect. How could we uh, consider the impact of time on the value of your money? Uh, we have mathematically uh, two procedures. One of them is called compounding techniques, the second one is called discounting. You, but through compounding and discounting, you will be able to quantify the time uh, value of money. Let us start by the first case. Imagine that uh, you are going to have a specific type of cash for one period case. How could we consider the impact of time on the value of your money? The first approach for this is called compounding, which means that you are aiming to determine what is the future value of your cash flow after a period of time. Let us take an example for this. Imagine that you were to invest 10,000 USA dollars at 5% interest for one year. In such a type of uh, case, how could we determine uh, the future value? This means that the future uh, value of this amount, it will equal to uh, our principal, which is uh, 10,000, compounding multiplied by 1 plus R, which is the discount uh, rate, power to T, and in our case, T is we equal to 1. So this means that after five years of today, we are expected to have a total amount of 10,500 uh, at the end of the five year investment. So if we would like to generalize uh, this form, we could say that if you are facing one period case, you could calculate its uh, future uh, value using the following equation, FV, equal to C0 multiplied by 1 plus R power to T. 
where FV, this is the acronomy for future uh, value. C0, this is uh, cash flow uh, today, always in, in finance, uh, time zero, it's referred to cash flow today. R, this is the discount rate. T, this is the period of time. So by implementing uh, this uh, equation, in our example, uh, we succeeded to determine the future value of your cash flow. The second uh, technique, if you would like to consider the impact of time on the value of your money, it's called discounting. That this means that you are aiming to determine what is the present value of bromized cash flow. How is this? Imagine that example, if you were to be promised, 10,000 USA dollars, which is due in one year, when interest rate at 5%. In this case, if you are interested to determine the present value of this bromized amount of 10,000, you need to discount it by a specific interest rate. If the interest rate, for example, is 5%, but in this case, the present value will equate to 10,000 discounted by 1 plus R. As you see, 10,000 divided by 1 plus 05, this will equate to 9,523.81. But as you see, uh, if you were promised to have 10,000 in one year, its uh, present uh, value uh, we equal to 9523.81. So if we would like to generalize this form, we could say that the present value of one period case, it's equal to BV equal to C1 divided by 1 plus R where BV, this is the present value today, C1, this is the cash flow at the end of period one, discounted by one plus R, where R, this is the interest rate. But in general, if you uh, are interested to determine a future value, or present value, we could generalize our form to be uh, the future value for multiple uh, period case could be determined by using the following uh, equation. Fv equals to C0 multiplied by one plus R part of T, where Fv this is a future uh, value for uh, a specific period of time. C0, this is the current cash flow at date zero. One, this is the appropriate discount or interest rate. T, this is the number of uh, period which uh, the cash is invested. This is the general uh, form if you would like to determine the future uh, value. Uh, at the same uh, uh, meaning, if you are interested to determine the uh, present value, we could say present uh, value is equal uh, to FV discounted by one plus R power to T, and in this way, you could determine its uh, BV. There is a very important uh, thing you must be uh, aware of it. What is the relation between future uh, value and compounding concepts? When we implemented our uh, future value, we found its uh, future value, it is 5.92.
which is greater than the sum of the original dividend plus uh, five increases of 40% on the original 1.10 as a dividend. You, but this means that the compounding is more than just taking the sum of the original uh, dividends uh, over uh, a specific period of time. Mathematically, when we calculated the future value, we found it is 5.92. But if you are just uh, taking the accumulated uh, dividends over a uh, five years, for example, here we have uh, 1.10 multiplied by 40% uh, uh, as increase, multiplied by five. If you calculate this, it will find it is just 3.30. What is the difference between them? This difference is due to what we call compounding. Uh, sometimes we refer to it as a magic of compounding. And this is why future uh, value is very bromized uh, technique, because actually it implements the concept of uh, compounding. If we would like to figure uh, this, uh, give a look. This is the same example and uh, showing you what we are doing in the future value by implementing the concept of compounding. As you see, at uh, time uh, zero, we have one uh, buoyant uh, 10. Then after one year, this one point 10 will be invested at specific interest rate, which is uh, 1 plus 40% power to 1. This will be give 1.54. The same situation, 1.54 uh, uh, after uh, two years, it will be 1.10 multiplied by 1 plus 40% power to 2. This will give you 2.16. The same situation at the end of the third year, it is 1.10 multiplied by 1 plus 40% power to 3 and so on. And this is showing you the magic of compounding. It is more than just taking the accumulative uh, dividends at a specific uh, percentage. We could also explain uh, this why uh, we have uh, just a difference when we implementing the concept of compounding. Let us take the following example, which show you the main difference between uh, uh, taking the compounding or we just take the accumulative of uh, the each dividend at a specific uh, percentage. Uh, example for this, imagine an investor invest $100 uh, dollar for three years at 10% compounded annually. This means that the interest earned at the future value of this investment, it is $133.10, uh, which is more than 130, which just occurred at just a 10% as a symbol interest rate, yani, for instance. Here, in time period one, you have at the beginning 100. If you just uh, invest it, if you just, in, if you invest it at uh, uh, what we call it, uh, compound interest uh, uh, rate, this means that 100 multiplied by a interest rate, which is 10%, it is 10. This is the value of the interest. By the end of the year, you have 100 plus 10, this is 110. At the beginning of the second year, we started by 100. 10, not 100, 110. This 110 
multiplied by the simple interest rate, which is 10%, this is giving you 11. So at the end of the year, it will be 100, uh, 121. The same at the beginning of the third year, uh, 121 multiplied by 10%, it is give 12.10%. So if you give a look for the total at the end of the year, three, it is 133.10, which it is more than just you taking the accumulative of interests, your dividends. And if you're taking the accumulative of dividends uh, per each year, we have 10, 10, 10. If you take the sum, it is just 30. So the total, it should be 130. But in our example, we found that the total, it is not 130. It is 133.10. This difference, which is 3.10%, this is actually the compounding effect or the magic of compounding, and you must uh, be careful about this. Uh, going uh, back to uh, this uh, equation, when I say uh, FV is equal to uh, C0 multiplied by 1 plus R bar to T. If you give a look for this equation, you will find that we have uh, four variables. Uh, we have FEV as a future value. We have C0 as a cash flow uh, today. R, this is the interest uh, rate. And uh, T, this is the time. This means that in this equation, if you know three variables of this equation, you could conclude the missing one. And yani for instance, if you know what is the value of C0, what is the value of R? What is the value of E? In a very simple way, you will be able to determine FEV and so on. And this is what we are going to do in the coming slide. Give a look for this uh, uh, part. In this part, we are interested to determine how long is the wait. How long is the wait? It means that we have the other given uh, variables are known, and in this exercise, we are interested to determine what is T. Example for this, imagine that if we uh, deposit 5,000 USA dollars today in an account being 10%, how long does it take to grow to 10,000? Uh, As you see, we deposit today, this means that C0 equal 5,000, and we have R, which is 10%, and we expected that this amount, it will grow at, uh, to be uh, 10,000 after uh, a period of time, which is missing T. In this case, if we rewrite our equation, if uh, V equal to C0 multiplied by 1 plus R power to T, FEV is 10,000, C0 5,000, R it's 1 plus 10% power to T, which is uh, missing. By taking uh, then eugarism, in, in, in this case, we could determine uh, T equals 7.27 years. This means that if you have current deposit of 5,000 and you would like to get 10,000 in the future, with interest rate of 10%, you need to keep and to invest this amount of cash for a period of time equals seven billion to seven uh, years. The same situation, if you are interested to determine what rate is enough in, in this exercise, you have a given uh, uh, and the other's variable, and the missing one is the rate, which is a discount rate. And you need, you need to determine what is the proper uh, value of this need. Example for this, imagine that, or assume that the total uh, cost of a college education will be uh, 50,000. When your child enters college in 12 years, you have $5,000 to invest today. What rate of interest must you earn on your investment to cover the cost of your child's education? 
we are going to write down our uh, equation, which is if uh, uh, V equals Z zero multiplied by one plus R power to uh, T. In this case, we know what is the value of F V, which is 50,000. Uh, we know what is the value of C zero, which is 5,000. R, this is uh, interest uh, rate and uh, t this is a number of uh, years uh, by compensating in this uh, equation we will be able to determine what is the value of our discount rate which is 21.15 percent this is our approval uh, discount rate Uh, sometimes when we are going to implement the concept of uh, compounding, maybe this uh, compounding uh, it doesn't occur one time per year, but sometimes we need to conduct such a compounding multiple uh, times in a year. In this case, you need to make a modification on the equation of the FEV, taking in your consideration at times of compounding of your investment per a year. Uh, in, in some situation, you could have monthly compounding. Sometimes you could have quarterly compounding. Uh, sometimes you have semi-annual compounding, or sometimes you will have anyway or yearly compounding. In, in this case, you need first to determine uh, M times of the compounding occurred per uh, year. Uh, in this case, you need to make the following modification. If you have a specific type of compounding, you need to compensate in the following equation to determine what is the future value of a specific cash flow. In this uh, case, the future uh, value, it will equal to C0 multiplied by 1 plus R over M power M multiplied by T. If uh, V, this is uh, your future value, expected future value of your cash flow. C0, this is the current uh, cash flow. R, this is the uh, Compound uh, interest rate divided by M. What is the M? This is the number of times of compounding per a year. And I explain for you this way based on how many times you are going to conduct compounding. If it is annual compounding, M will equal to 1. If you have semi annual compounding, M will equal 2. If you have quarter compounding M, it will equal 4. If you have monthly compounding M, it will equal 12. If you have daily compounding M, equals 365. And then power 2 M, which is the times of compounding, multiplied by T, this is uh, a year of your investment that you are going to invest uh, a specific cash flow. Uh, let us take an example showing you how we could conduct the future value under the concept of compounding uh, periods. Example, if you invest $50 uh, dollar for three years at 12% compounded semi-annual, in this case, you will be able to determine the future value as follows. If V equals C0, which is 50, multiplied by 1 plus R, this is the discount rate, which is 12%, because it is compounded semi-annual, in this case, M equals 2, if we divide by 2, Power 2, M, which is 2, multiplied by number of the years of investment, which is 3 years. In our case, 
if V it will equals 70.93. So this means that if you have today 50 USA dollars and you are going to invest it at 12% compounded semi-annually for three years, you expected at the end of the third year to have 70.93. Sometimes uh, there is a need to compare between different investments. And sometimes you have this investment at different expected uh, type of discount uh, rate. Sometimes you could have an investment uh, is uh, going to be discounted by anyway compounding interest rate or sometimes uh, it is an investment, it's semi-annual compounding interest rate or quarterly compounding interest rate. In this case, how could you make a comparison between uh, those different types of investments? It will be very uh, difficult or could be misconfused. To avoid this situation, we have a magic solution. It's called calculation of effective annual interest rate. What is the effective annual interest rate? We refer to it by EAR. What is the EAR? This is an annual rate that would give us the same end of investment after three years if we are using certain type of a compounding interest rate. This means that, for example, imagine that you have uh, uh, 50, for example, imagine that you have 50 USA dollars, and this 50, it's a, a, a compounded uh, annually, it's a compounded uh, uh, semi-annually, and you would like to determine how much is the effective interest rate. To determine this, it's very easy you need to implement the following equation, which is one plus R divided by M, power to N multiplied by M minus one. But if you are interested to determine the effective annual interest rate, this will equal to one plus R over M, power N multiplied by M minus one. Where R, this is a compounding interest rate. M, this is the times of compounding. N, this is the number of year. And in our case, we are calculating effective anyway. So N, it always equal one. multiplied by M, this is the number of compounding per year minus one. In our case, we have semi anyway compounding interest rate, which is uh, 12%, but we compensate as follows. 1 plus 12%, this is the semi annual compounding, divided by M, which is the times of compounding per year, in our case is 2, power 2, N, which is 1, multiplied by M, which is 2, this is the number of compounding, minus 1. But we found that if you are going to uh, invest uh, in a specific project with uh, a specific compounded semi annual at 12%, this will be equivalent as if you have an investment and at a specific discount rate, 12.36% compounded annually. But this means that 12% compounded semi annual, it is equivalent to 12.36% compounded anyway. As you see, we now succeeded to unify our base, so the comparison, it will be more uh, easier in this uh, case. Another uh, example, imagine uh, that you are interested to find the effective annual interest rate of 
18% ABR loan that is compounded monthly. Yani this type of uh, loan is giving 18% compounded monthly. What is the equivalent uh, rate of return or what is the equivalent interest rate uh, based on the concept of compounded annually to determine this? We are using the effective annual interest rate, which is EER is equal to 1 plus R over M, power N multiplied by M minus 1. Let us compensate. Equals 1 plus the compounded monthly, which is 18%, because this is uh, monthly, you buy M, it will be 12, so we divide by 12. Power 2 N, we said it is always 1, multiplied by M, which is 12. This will give you what we call 19.56%. As you see, if you have a specific interest with uh, uh, anyway, interest rate 18% as a compounded uh, monthly, this is equivalent uh, to anyway compounding uh, interest rate of 19.56. Uh, 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 yeah, by the end of uh, this uh, part, you must now understand what is the difference between uh, future value and uh, present uh, value, why future value and the present value are important because they enable us uh, to consider the impact of time on the value of money as we explained that time has a negative uh, impact on the value of your money and since your investment decision is long term decision this means that uh, time is one of the most important factor that affect on such a decision therefore you must consider it before you supporting your decision how could we consider the impact of time on the value of your money this will be considered either by implementing the compounding uh, concept or you are implementing the discounting uh, concept also we explain the main difference uh, between uh, effective anyway interest rate EER and a compounding interest rate. The new section of uh, this uh, chapter we are going to discuss uh, different types of cash flows. Uh, actually uh, we have many classification of cash flows we could say cash inflows and we could say cash outflow but for the purpose of the chapter we are going to classify cash flows into four types we have perpetuity type we have growing perpetuity we have annuity and we have a growing annuity let us start to differentiate between each one of them Perpetuity, it's a constant stream of cash flow that lasts forever. And you are going to have constant stream uh, of cash flow and there is no end of such a type of cash flow. It's continue forever. The second type, growing perpetuity, you are going to have a stream of cash flow but this uh, stream of cash flow it will grow at a constant rate forever and you have constant growth rate the third one it's called annuity what is the annuity this is the stream of constant cash flow which lasts for a fixed number of periods and you have a fixed uh, amount of cash flow and this is a fixed amount of cash flow it will last for a fixed uh, period of time and finally we have a growing annuity what is a growing annuity this is a stream of cash flow but it grows at a constant gross rate for a fixed number of periods as you see we have perpetuity we have growing 
perpetuity, we have huh, annuity, and we have a growing annuity. The most important for us is how could, how could you determine the present value of each one of those uh, cash flow? Let us start by the first one, which is the perpetuity. As you see, uh, perpetuity, this is a constant uh, stream of cash flow that uh, lasts us forever. As you see, today is zero. We didn't have cash flow. But by the end of each year, we are going to have constant cash flow. At the end of the first year, we are going to have C. At the end of the second year, we are going to have C. At the end of the third year, we are going to have C and forever. Yeah, there is no end for such a type of cash flow. Such a type of cash flow, it is called perpetuity. And if you are interested to determine its BV, in this case, uh, BV, it will equal to C over R, where C, this is cash flow at the end of the first year, divided by R, which is a discount rate or interest rate, and then you will be able uh, to determine its BV. One of the famous examples uh, of uh, perpetuity, uh, it is a British Consul. British uh, Consul. This is one of the very famous type of perpetuity. Let us take an example showing you an example of a British Consul as a perpetuity. How could we determine its BV? Example, what is the value of a British Consul that promises to pay 15 British pounds each year every year until the sun turns into a red giant and burns the planet to a crisp. What is uh, our BV in this case if the interest rate is 10%? As you see, you are going to figure it out. Uh, we have at the end of each year, we have a 15 bridge bond forever, no end for such a type of cash flow. It's BV, it will equal BV equals 15, which is C, divided by the discount rate, which is 10, this equal to 150. But if you are invested in such a type of investment as a perpetuity, and you are interested to have its BV, you could determine by this equation. Another uh, shape of uh, cash flow it is a growing perpetuity. Uh, a growing uh, perpetuity, uh, it means that we are expected to have a stream of cash flows, but this cash flow is expected to grow at constant uh, gross uh, rate, and it lasts forever. But again, a mean characteristics of a growing perpetuity that you are expected to have stream of cash flows. This stream of cash flows is not constant, but it grows at a constant gross rate and it lasts forever. If we would like to figure it out, it will be as follows. Today is zero at the end of the first year, we have C. By the end of second year, it will grow at a constant gross rate, which is G. So it will be C multiplied by 1 plus G. At the end of the third year, it will be C multiplied by 1 plus G power to 2 and so on. There is no end for it. In this case, if you are interested to determine what is the BV, in this case, BV, it will equal C over a difference between R minus G, where BV, this is the present value of a growing perpetuity. C, this is the stream of cash flow. R, this is the interest uh, rate. And G, this is the gross rate. Let us take an example and showing you how could we determine the BV of such 
uh, type of cash flow. Uh, example, imagine that you are expected a specific type of dividends next year at amount of 1.30. This dividends are expected to grow at 5% forever. From this, we could, we could conclude that this is a certain type of a growing perpetuity. If the discount rate is 10%, in this case, we are going to determine the BV. First, we figure it out. By the end of this first year, we will have 130. By the end of the second year, it will be 130 multiplied by 1.05, 1 plus R. Uh, by the end of the third year, 1.30 multiplied by 1.05 uh, uh, and so uh, power to 2 and so on. And it will continue. Yeah, but in this case, in, in, in this case, we are able to determine ABV as follows. ABV is equal to 1.30 divided by R minus G. What is R? This is 10% uh, minus G 0.5. By compensating in, in this, it will equal to 26 US dollars, and this is a BV of a growing perpetuity. The third uh, type of cash flow, it's called annuity. And uh, what's the annuity? Annuity, it's a constant stream of cash flows with a fixed maturity. It's a constant stream of cash flow with fixed maturity. But as you see, every year we are going to have constant cash flow. And this cash flow uh, ha has a constant value and has a fixed maturity uh, this is why you will see we are going to end at T. And we have a specific fixed maturity is T. In this case, if you are interested to determine what is the BV of the annuity, in this case, the BV, it will equal to uh, C divided by R multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r power 2 t. What is c? c, this is constant cash flow. r, this is a discount rate. t, this is a period of time. Uh, be careful of such uh, equation uh, because uh, part of this equation, it will be used when we are going to determine what is the BV of bond uh, variables. Let us take an example and showing you how could we determine the BV of annuity. Uh, example, imagine if you can afford $400 monthly car uh, payment, how much car can you afford if interest rate are seven on 36 months units? So as you see, every uh, at the end of each uh, month, uh, you are going to pay 400. This it will continue for three years, so it will continue for uh, 36 months. And you have interest rate. So let us compensate in our equation. So BV it will equal C uh, divided by R multiplied by one minus one over. 1 plus r power 2t. So you must memorize this equation. If you are facing annuity and you are interested to determine NCBV, so the BV equals C over r multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r power 2t. But be careful in this exercise. Here uh, we have monthly data regarding the amount of payment, which is 400. Also, we have a number of months, which is 36 months. This is mean three years, but the interest rate, it is annual rate. You couldn't use this number as it is. You must unify the base. Either you are using 
monthly data or you are using yearly data, but you must unify the base of calculation. So the easiest way is to convert a, the interest rate from annual interest rate to monthly interest rate by dividing it by 12. This is why in our equation, in our solution, BV equals 400. This is a monthly car payment divided by 0.7 this is interest rate we divide it by 12 to convert it from annual interest rate to monthly interest rate multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 0.7 divided by 12 power to 36 as you see such a type of payment if we are interested to determine its BV, so the BV it will equal to wave 954.59 US dollars. Here, this is another uh, trick example. It's about uh, annuity, but as you see, this annuity it it's going to be occurred not from a first year but it's going to occur uh, its uh, first uh, payment two years from today yani if we would like to figure it out instead of having one hundred dollars at the end of the first uh, year but exactly this is going to start at the end of the second year. So if it is going to be started at the end of the second year, so this means that you need first to determine what is the present value, what is the present value at the end of a, 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 a at the end of a, a first year, and then you need to calculate uh, how much this will be at the time zero. An yani example, we started by zero, and we have one, two, three, four, five. And then we will have, as you see, a payment of $100. It will make its first payment two years from today. And yani it occurs at the end of the second year. But first, you need to discount it first to determine what is BV at the first year and then again re-discount it to determine how much it will be at the first year uh, at the time of zero. And this is the trick in this case. You guys see what this is what we are going to do. First, we will take each payment started at the end of the first, uh, at the end of the second year 100 at the end of the second year, 100 at the third year, 100 at the fourth year, 100 at the fifth year. First, we determine its present value at the end of the first year. How it is by determining its BV. How could we determine the BV? BV, it will equal to 100 discounted by 1 plus 0.9 power to 1. And then 100 at the third year will be discounted at 1.09 power to 2. 100 divided by 1.09 power to 3. 100 divided by 1.09 power to 4. This, it will be 323.97. This is the present value, but at the end of the first year. This is at the end of the first year. If you would like to determine its BV at time zero, you need again farther to discount this amount. So 3 to 3.97 will be discounted by 1 plus 0.9 power to 1. And this is its BV at the current year at time zero. So you must be careful of time when the cash flow it occurs because this will affect of your way of uh, discounting. Uh, the final uh, part of uh, this uh, lecture is to deal with a specific type of annuity. It's called the growing annuity. What is a growing annuity? You having a fixed 
uh, you having a stream of cash flow uh, with a fixed uh, maturity, but this type of cash flow, it grow at a constant growth rate. It grow at a constant growth rate. But in this uh, case, you must take this in your huh, in your consideration because it will grow. It is a growing stream of cash flow with a fixed maturity, and it will grow from time to time uh, by this. But in this uh, case, to determine our uh, BV and BV, it will equal to C over R minus G multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R, all of them power to T. Using such uh, equation, you will be able to determine its uh, uh, B, uh, V. Let us take an example for this. As you see, we have a, a specific uh, retirement, and this uh, retirement plan you offer to pay 20,000 uh, uh, per year for 40 year, and this is expected to increase annually. This is a gross rate by 3%. What is the present value of such uh, retirement if our discount rate is 10%? But let us compensate in our equation to determine a BV. This will equal to BV is equal to C, which is 20,000, uh, divided by R minus G. R is 10%, G is 3%, multiplied by 1 minus uh, 1 plus R, divide, uh, 1 plus G, divided by 1 plus R power to T. 1 plus G, it is 1 plus 0.3, divided by 1 plus R, which is 1.10, Power to 40, this will give you, this is our BV of a specific growing annuity. Uh, those, uh, you, by the end of this uh, part, you must, by the end of this part, you must be aware of what is the meaning of BV, what is the meaning of FV, uh, different types of cash flow, if you are facing perpetuity, if you are facing a growing perpetuity, if you are facing um, uh, annuity, if you are facing a growing annuity, how could you uh, determine uh, its uh, BV and you must aware of this. Uh, those are some uh, related uh, problems of uh, chapter three, financial analysis. So please try to uh, prepare yourself, think about the solution, and we will refer to the solution of them in uh, our face-to-face uh, -face, uh, lecture. Uh, the same situation here. This is uh, problem two. I'm giving you some uh, given uh, data regarding the sales, total asset, uh, debts, and the giving profit margin. And I'm asking you to determine what is the net income, what is the return on asset, what is the return on uh, equity. This is also uh, problem number three. I'm asking you to determine what is the book value per share, uh, what is the price uh, earning ratio, what is the market book ratio. This is just uh, a small and simple exercises uh, to prepare yourself. It's the same situation. Here, this is the problem four. A Huda bank has a debt equity ratio of 1.25 uh, return on assets which is 7.3%, and the total equity is 24.5. What is the equity multiplier? Return on equity net income. These problem one, two, three, four are exercise for you. Please try to prepare yourself, and if you are facing a question, don't hesitate to contact me. I wish for you all of the best, and see you inshallah next lecture with my best wishes.